car shop, the spare part where I spend my weekend, especially when my wife drives my car. <laughs> I'm ordering tire, engine part, exhaust, whatever, it's always break down. Usually I ring up and go to pick it up over the weekend. Can we have similar for body part, human body part? Can we just ring up, say, can we have two kidney and the 20 centimeter blood vessel for bypass? Can we have a nose or trachea and so on? So that's my talk about, I'm going to talk about today. To make an organ, the main foundation is the scaffold, the pound, you know, it will be like a building, shroud building. If you have the scaffold, then the, the rest goes very well. So we've been trying to make a scaffold to develop an organ. Organ donation is going down. You know, there's more people need organ. There is a problem you know, with organ donation, immunologic problem. So we're trying to make actually human spare part and to be like a car body part. You, know, you could just bring up and I said, I need a liver. I need a heart and to order that. So the, the foundation, I said, the scaffold is we've been working on the nanotechnology inspired by nature, like a butterfly, how the in beetle work and stuff. We're growing cells on the butterfly wing where they don't get infection, they're hydrophobic, the structure is different, and we studying other you know, insects and learning from nature and extracting the chemical information and to make synthetic material. And from the synthetic material, you could see that bottle there, and that's the polymer, so the material. From that polymer, we make a scaffold. You could see track here, the wind pipe here, we made that scaffold for a patient. So when you got the scaffold, people were, you know, when we put our first wind pipe in the patient, Everybody said, well, why, you know, if you know, people come in and say, how can you do it that other people can do it in the world? Why suddenly you can do that? Important, the most important thing, there are not many material you could put inside the body and be accepted. There's a couple of material around, synthetic material about 30 years old, and it's not very good. So this is virtually one of the new material, new generation material, based on nature and nanotechnology, you could put inside the body, format it, print it anyway, 3D printing, manufacturing, any size format, put it inside the body, but do not reject. To do that, we had to do about three years work, toxicology, put in the animal model, to see that they're not toxic, is accepted, and in any format we could do. So that had to be done, and that, there are not many materials in the market. Or, or research. So we got our scaffold. So people say, okay, could you make a nose for us? You know, if you have a cell, stem cell, you can't grow it in on it. It's like a tons of rice. And it have to build it somewhere. So a stem cell, think about bricks. When you got your scaffold going on, and you could put the bricks on, and to make a little room, big room, different size, so that, you know, that's what it. So we make our scaffold, any shape we want, and then we put the stem cell into it to functionalize that organ. So for example, in the nose, there's epidural cell, you could smell, all kind of things. So you incorporate the stem cell, and all other, you know, doesn't have to be just, also synthetic biomolecules and stuff, incorporated to put this, to functionalize that organ. So, first, if somebody ring up, say, I want an ear. You say, fine, you know, send your CT scan, patient CT scan. Do you want it any shape you want, or you want exactly the ear you lost? They say, no, no, I, I got a picture before I lost it, due to cancer, trauma, fire, whatever, burn. And they send the CT scan. We send the CT scan to the uh, CAD, CAD you know, computer aided design, and the left hand side, you get the picture made up. The glass maker, it makes a glass mold for us. And the right hand side, we pour our material into that glass and we get a 3D mold. And this is a material which can put inside the body. Currently, actually, we jump in some of those and we print the 3D mold, you know. So that, that we do. So when you make that, 
or we make such like a nose. And recently we had a patient, not one or two, several patients, they need a nose. But they lost the nose completely from cancer. I mean, you know, when you look at it, you just see the nostril, you know, at the, removed completely. There are patients with burn, you know, they lost half of the face and nose and trauma, all kind of stuff, you know. So we make a nose from the CT scan. In case they don't have a CT scan or they don't have a photo, we can construct the nose on his face, take his picture to do the 3D modeling, and the person can choose it, that's the nose I want. Then we print it out, you know, we manufacture that shape, and we put a lot of salt and sugar in our material when we manufacture it, and then we put the material in the scaffold, in the water, salt and sugar dissolve and comes out. Then make lots of honeycomb structure inside it. We get the stem cell from patient, from bone marrow, injected to this material or seeded, and then we got the, you know, we convert it to chondrocyte, that's make cartilage, ready to go on the nose, you know. So before to get ready on the nose, we put in the bioreactor to cell to grow. Bioreactor really glass, smart glass jar, have the same, inside they got same temperature, oxygen and so on in the physiological body. It's ready to go face, but we cannot make skin, and nobody else can make skin. So it has to go under the skin before the face. You know. Currently, if somebody, they don't have a nose, they just make a plastic nose and put on the glasses. And in the night, you take it off, wash it, morning, you know, and you can imagine how bad it is. So we make nose, and the best place to make a nose, to put the nose to skin to cover, is on the face, on the forehead, or neck. Because skin type is similar. So skin type is very different from the body in you know, that place. And you know, socially, imagine if somebody lost their nose, you know, to stick on their forehead, or their or the night had a drink and get up in the morning looking through the mirror, God, my nose there, you know. <laughs> so, so that what we put the nose under his forearm. We put the patient nose on their forearm. Under the forearm, the skin is quite fiddly, they put it, and then stay there for different patient, different age group and stuff. The skin has to be covered. If it doesn't integrate, if the skin doesn't integrate, then the nose rub against the skin, and the skin becomes thin and extrude and get infection. So it's quite important skin be there covered, and that will be monitored, the skin incorporated into it. Then plastic surgeon will cut it and remove it on the face. Quite complex, clever surgery, but they have to get the microcirculation or suture it on so blood supply the skin. So that, you know, we're doing. We had another patient come in, you know. So there's a patient, in it's called Icelandic patient, originally an African student studying in Iceland, and he had a cancer of neck. So they treated with the radiotherapy for a couple of years before, and then cancer comes back. And the green is cancer here. The blue is the trachea or windpipe. And the long, you could see that, and the red is the you know, altar there, you know. So this patient, and you know, the, from Iceland, there's a surgeon called Thomas. He took him to United States, quite a few places, you know, uh, and the, everybody said, no, we can't do anything. Just let him to go to enjoy himself in the past few years, a few months of his life and stuff. Let, you know, we can't do anything. So he goes to a, a surgeon in Karolinska Institute in Sweden and called Paramacrini, and he take him on and said, yes, I can do something for him. So this um, professor come to us, you know, and which I know him, said, Alex, can you make a trachea for us? You know? And usually as academics, say, yes, you could do you know, that. You know? And I was told to like, they had six months, year, two years, and he said, this patient got one week to live if you could make trachea. You know, a bit stressed and stuff. So well, in the end, he gave us 10 days to make a track here, you know. So I told to my PhD student, I said, her name is Claire, I said, Claire, we have to make a track here, you know. And she was like a PhD, you know, just dipping in, doing first year of PhD, you know. And we hardly knew what track here looked like. So I said, Claire, <laughs> go on the internet, Google and type in track here, you know. So here she is, Google on the track here, 
and we're trying to find out trachea and rub to the butcher to get some trachea from the sheep and pigs, you know, bring and see what it looked like. And we had the basic technology there. We had the material, we could mold it to anything. We knew, we done the toxicology. We could have put in human, there's no problem. We done a lot of stem cell work before, no problem. We done a lot of cardiac. So we just, now we just want to make a trachea. So it wasn't difficult if you make nose, ear, make trachea. It'd be different, but you know, you could do the same thing. So we, we made those ring, the trachea got a ring, called elastic cartilage ring. So when people eat esophagus next to it, ring goes down and then it's come up, otherwise it can't stop breathing, you know. We made the ring, in the middle of the ring is a muscle, sort of, and you can stretch your head up and down, you know, certain stuff. We make similar things. So on the left hand side, you could see the trachea we made, you know, right hand side from Google. Oh, sorry. So the most important, when you make an organ, have to be the right size for that patient, have to be tailored to that patient. You could make lots of trachea off the shelf, you know, to buy, but also it's nice to have it tailored to that patient. So for example, when they remove the native trachea and bronchi, and if, if they want you to make a small, and this is quite big, it's quite difficult to suture it back together. It's a bit like a, a plumbing, you know, if it's, it's just impossible, then you have to go buy it in the middle part or something. The angle, if it's not the angle, if it's not the same, you know, pro proper angle, the lung will pull out, you know, you can't breathe well, you know. So even a couple of uh, degree difference affected, even a even couple of millimeter, it's to suture the effect in it. You, you know, you get holes and quite difficult. So we got a CT scan from patient. We send it because we have so short time, virtually a glass artist to make the uh, 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 um, glass mold for us. Usually we do 3D printing. And then we build a trachea around that glass mold exactly to patient size. And the right hand side, you could see trachea. Then we got the bone marrow from patient, a stem cell from bone marrow, incorporated into the wall. And that was, uh, uh, that was taken to Karolinski Institute in uh, Sweden. Patient couldn't come to London or anywhere, but it had to be uh, transferred in Sweden. Because in a Scandinavian country like uh, Iceland, pay for a patient to a Scandinavian country, not to come to UK or something. And Paolo Martin is a quite you know, well-known surgeon, he did that. So, and also inside the trachea, there's a stem cell called epidural, sorry, there's a cell type called epidural cell. That cell is there to uh, stop infection, you know, mucus clearance, you know. And so we can grow an epidural cell, no problem, but we had, and usually it takes several weeks to grow, and we didn't have the time to grow. So when we gave it to surgeon, he actually got some epidural cell, uh, tissue from nose, inside the nose, cut it, bits and pieces, a bit like a hair transplant or, or you grow in like a grass in a bit of pieces, kind of. And he sutured it, in, you could see in the middle picture, he sutured it in the, inside the scaffold, so randomly, and then they transplanted. Transplant took a long time, 14 hours. Well, not just a trachea, that wouldn't take long. But when they opened the chest, the aorta was cancer, so they had to remove, uh, replace part 10 centimeter of aorta. You know, so that took a long time. And the trachea became a minor operation at this time, you know. And the operation done, and patient went out. This was June 2011. And now, last uh, January, me and my PhD student, Claire Clory, if you see there, we went to see him, he's in Iceland. And in Iceland, he's in celebrity in Iceland. Because Iceland is about 300,000 population. And everybody, he'd been on so much on the news, everybody knew him. And he's a geophysicist, you know, he's, he's a PhD student extracting the heat from the ground and stuff, you know, those kind of things. So they give him the Icelandic citizenship, he brought his wife. He had one child, and since transplant, he had another one, you know. And he worked in the lava, you know. So we went to see him, and he, you know, he took us to McDonald's, really lovely. <laughs> It's nice, you know, and he talk well. I mean, I'm next to him, I'm, I'm more lucky ill than him, you know, <laughs> you know, because I had some operation done on me. So, we are very pleased, you know. This work, you know, we're pleased with that. And so going back really to 
uh, place in order. I think this is it. it. Future, we don't need organ. You know, we don't need to beg people to donate organ and stuff. That's the way it goes, you know. I mean, imagine how much your mobile phone improved past over, you know, 20 years, you know, from this side, this side, and now does everything. Now, the future, us and other people working, you could virtually ring up, say, two kidney and like 20 centimeter blood vessel. Where's my assistant gone here? <laughs> Thank you. We make artery, human artery, you know, human artery, artery. <laughs> and we actually started, we've done quite a few patients, and now we're starting clinical trial in September. And this is the artery we make, you know. So we could order, I mean, whatever size you want. You want for coronary artery, maybe you need 40 centimeter. You know, you want for leg, you know, here. You know, and this artery is it's made from material which I explained and have a mechanical property, same as artery, is a palsy. You know. And inside there is certain peptide, inside the blood is called progenital stem cell, circulating. And this peptide is open its you know, hand, capture those stem cells. From sheer flow, a stem cell become endothelial cell. And the endothelial cell is a cell type cover entire cardiovascular system. The reason we make one meter, because bypass graft for leg, they usually need about 70, 80 centimeter, unless you're a Russian girl and you need much longer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 